Welcome to Syntax. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Front End Happy Hour podcast. Welcome to this week's JS Party. Live from Shipshape Studios, this is Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and me, Charles William Carpenter III. That's right, Charles. We drink whiskey and talk about web development. I mean, it's all in the name. It's not that deep. This is Whiskey Web and Whatnot. Do not adjust your set. Hey, everyone. We want to invite you to join us at All Things Open. All Things Open is the largest open source tech web conference on the U.S. East Coast. It's hosted annually in the heart of Research Triangle Park in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. Target audiences include developers, engineers, decision makers, and open source community members, and anyone else involved with open source software. Four to 5,000 people from all over the world are expected in October. We're gonna be there. More information can be found online at 2024.allthingsopen.org. I really hope I don't have to spell that for you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of It's Only Monday, and we're drinking hard liquor already with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and Charles William Carpenter the Third. Yeah, it's uh, it's that kind of Monday, though, a little bit. I don't know why. It just feels it like it is. That. Yes, it is. Thank we you have for a joining special us, guest Madison. today. You were saying the same thing, introducing Madison. <laughs> hey, Madison. Do you want to give the folks at home a few sentences about who you are and what you do? Sure. I'm Madison. Super excited to be here today. Any excuse to drink? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably most well-known online from hosting this thing, Code Book Club, which I started four or five years ago now. It's been a while, which is doing book clubs and accountability groups for developers online. And yeah, I also work as a developer and very excited for my drink. Mm -hmm. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, I mean, given that, I don't want you to have to wait any longer. Maybe we could yeah. just get to that. <laughs> uh, I do want to talk more about Code Book Club and yes, we'll come back some to other that. things. But okay, uh, this is my part of the job. So today we're having the Smoke Wagon Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It is you 90... You got to say it in your accent, Chuck. Uh, straight Bourbon Whiskey, kind of like this. I, you know, I never really had that accent, or at least I got rid of it once I hit my twenties and uh, got out of Maysville, Kentucky. No, that's all a lie. Sorry, Smoke Wagon Straight Bourbon Whiskey, uh, ninety-two point five proof. It is not age stated, but we know that means it has to be at least four years old. A mash bill of sixty percent corn, thirty-six percent rye, and then four percent malted barley. Yes, and a pretty bottle. Mm. I think it's got a yes. nice, like, Beautiful. look decorative. Yeah, this one would be good. It's uh, by, what is it? H&C Distilling, Las Vegas. And I remember the first time I saw this years mm. ago, I was like, I don't know, Vegas, can they do whiskey? I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid of what's in here, but yeah. I, I have a <laughs> feeling this is going to gonna be a pleasant one. And Madison already drinks on hers. I just want to say that. Like, she got in there. <laughs> oh, awkward. What if it was like this month? What if it was down I, to here and I was like, oh, started this morning just working? And <laughs> I would have invited you on as a permanent co-host because <laughs> I would have been like, that's the vibe. Okay? I did do that. I just I poured it back with water. You know the trick? Can you just fill yes. it up with water again? Yeah. <laughs> did you used to do that to your parents at any point? I do think I did that at least once. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Did you guys do that? Yeah, well, I did that at, a, like, a friend's parents' house. Like, I used to, like, oh, have a sleepover at Jimmy's house, and then we'd drink some of the booze. And Jimmy's house? Is that his real name? That really was his name. My best oh, friend okay. in, like, Alias. late grade school, slash early middle school-ish times. This is very telling to when I had my first drink. My parents weren't very good. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> so, Yeah, back in... Pre-K, uh, you, you guys had a little Yeah, sleepover. they're not, and I say was. I mean, they're not dead, just to me. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whoa, just kidding. I make a lot of jokes that are awkward. Uh, yeah, I think I was like 12, <laughs> first time I like Dang. tried some drink from the liquor cabinet. And then wow. they're like, what's this? And, you know, you use some of it. And then you're like, oh, uh, we don't want to get in trouble. Water. Water will be fine. Yeah. yeah. So it's an old trick. Wow. Yeah, one of my friends uh, kept his liquor in the freezer and... We refilled it with water, and it he came over, and it was frozen. And we were like, "Oh yeah, uh, that actually happens with really shitty whiskey or like vodka <laughs> sometimes. Like, you know, if you put yeah. it in the freezer, it'll just freeze. Like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and he bought it. Well, and now yeah. he knows, and he's very upset with you. So, well, he, I'm sure he he's knew already, listener. but yeah. <laughs> All righty, so let's give Found it a sniff. Out. We'll give it a taste. Okay. Give it a sniff. Sniffy sniff. Grab my glass. Hmm. 
It's actually very mild on the nose. I want to say a little toffee, possibly. Smelling dragon fruit. Ooh, toffee. <laughs> dragon fruit. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Robbie's a big liar. I'm being serious. Okay. I can't even really <laughs> remember what dragon fruit smells like. I know I've had it. It's tasty. It's good. But like, I can't it? remember either. Yeah. I don't know. I've never had, I don't think, like a... The fruit itself. I've had it in like a smoothie or oh, whatever. But Yeah, so you have no idea. How do you know what it smells like from that the smoothie mix? It, re- okay. it evokes dragon fruit memories. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so fancy, you're <laughs> It evokes dragonfly <laughs> memories. Wow. Mm-hmm. That was beautiful. That's like yeah. a Taylor Swift lyric or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, uh, yeah, secretly he helps uh, ghostwrite some of her songs. You didn't know that, but. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Priming the palate a little bit. Oh, okay. It's got a little spiciness up Delicious. front. And then very smooth in the finish. I'm glad you like it. This is good. It's really smooth. I, I didn't send you something yeah. that you're like, this is... For <laughs> being called no, Smoke Wagon, it's not very smoky. Not at all. And I, I'm, I'm happy about that. It's not often I want a smoky campfire flavor in my whiskey. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, no. but not often. No. Do you have to be in, the, in a certain mood or a certain setting? Like Yeah. Or, like, rightly prepared for it. There's actually a whiskey that is called, like, Campfire Whiskey. And it's, uh, I always forget the, dis- oh, High West Distillery out of Utah. And you know. You're like, oh, yeah, you're kind of, like, primed for that setting. You're out camping and you have a little bit of this, like, campfire smoke whiskey. Or, and honestly, like, have it with some s'mores. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Very cool. Like, that's a nice setting. But, like, if you just get some fancy scotch and it's it's, like, whiffing in like a mouthful of cigar smoke or something and that one I I don't think that too much for me <laughs> but it's all subjective I guess sounds amazing yeah yeah I'm getting a little little bit of the spice I still feel like a little like light toffee or like Heath bar in the middle oh I or, love or, like or, coffee ice cream with Heath bar in it that does kind of remind me of that ooh. that's why I liked it I knew there was a reason why <laughs> you were like this is gonna work for me yeah okay so Since you're an avid listener of the show, you understand that we have a very highly stringent rating system of zero to eight tentacles, zero Mm -hmm. being horrible, so probably not this one for you. Uh, Four being middle of the road, it's okay, maybe I'd pick something else. Eight being amazing, I might crush this bottle tonight. Not, you know, which you maybe (laughs) will or won't. Robbie and I will sometimes like segment it up, but like, this is a bourbon, we'll compare it to other bourbons, yada, yada, yada. But Mm -hmm. you can do whatever you like. You can mix it with whiskeys. You can say compared to just libations in general, whatever you like. (laughs) I like to make Robbie go first and set the tone. All right. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to read this chat. It seems like people are debugging local storage, something with Riverside. I don't know what's happening. But anyway. um, (laughs) I like it. This is pretty good. I would say I typically don't like bourbons, and I do like this one pretty well. So, mm, I'm going to give it a six and a half, I think. Pretty solid. Nice. Do you feel ready, Madison? Yes. Okay. I think this is 7.5. Nice. This is delicious, really smooth. Love it. Yes. Yeah. And I honestly don't have that much to compare it to, but. (laughs) Yeah, but have you had like Jack Daniels or Maker's Mark or something like that? Yes, both. Today, okay. no, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, this morning, today. I did a little sample. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you start your mornings. Like, uh, yeah. if anybody has a phone number or website for Madison, she might need some help. Yeah. Um, might need a little help. <laughs> yeah, the code okay. makes sense only to me. Just put up the yeah. pull request. It's like, yeah. what is this? <laughs> it's super good. I'm senior. This is the problem. You I don't know. understand it because I'm, I'm senior. senior. So good. <laughs> yeah, go read the fucking manual. I would love to hear you say that to someone and mean it at some point. Go read the fucking manual first, okay? This is fine. <laughs> Okay, yeah, back to whiskey and us having it. Yeah, I do find it very tasty and, like, in comparison to, like, bourbons, like I said, well, Maker's Mark is weeded, but it's, like, an approachable one that a lot of people have had. Buffalo Trace is another one. Ones that I would, like, rate as, like, solid ones that you can get all over the place. Yeah, so this is, like, their entry-level version, too, which is pretty cool that it is this good. I feel like it's maybe normally somewhere around 40 bucks or so. So I think that is very approachable. It has flavorful, doesn't kill you with burn or sweet or anything else. I really like it. I'm going to give it a seven also. I mean, like, hmm. yes, would have more of this, would buy again. Yeah. Easy to share with friends. Lots of people are going to like this. Yeah. And yeah. the bottle, again, it's just so beautiful. I mean, when this showed up, this made my week, you guys. 
I think he ruined me for other podcasts. You go on a podcast, they don't send you this. I mean, I don't even want to go on anything <laughs> they else should. now. Like, look at <laughs> yeah, this. It's beautiful. I got this in the mail. I was like, wow. And, you know, I was showing it to my friends and my family, and everyone's wow. like, whoa, what podcast are, is this? That you can, They're like, I want to I get on this. I mean, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants on now. I know you actually started <laughs> a few people like, giving us shade for like what you didn't send us one i yeah. absolutely did it just yeah the payload folks yeah. we absolutely sent james a bottle and the fact that he didn't share with his team sounds like his problem that's so funny <laughs> yeah the first i posted about you guys in the first comment i saw i was like someone was like they never sent me one what the heck and i was just <laughs> like i'm sorry i guess you're not as cool as me like that sucks for you <laughs> that's really what it was it was yeah. like I was like, she streams at NextConf. I mean, how do we get her on? What do we got to buy? And I'll buy some whiskey. That works out. Uh, no, it's just yep. on theme. It would be cool, though, if, like, other podcasts kind of had a theme that they got you in on. And then they, like, send you something as a result of that or part of that. Yeah, I'd like to be on the Gold Bars podcast if they're sending <laughs> anything out. I'm really into gold <laughs> bars. I usually, I don't know, use those as paperweights. So yeah. paper that I, print. I, don't, I don't know what that would be. I was. Get, it's funny you said you shared with friends and family and whatever else. I like to look up some additional information about our guests and whatever else. So looking up Madison Kana online comes up with other Kanas, and I was like, "Oh, they're related, definitely, <laughs> right? You have a sister, or or is this other person with a similar last name on the internet just happen to kind of look like you?" That's my evil twin. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I have two sisters, and my little sister is, is like a scientist, basically, and my older sister is also a developer like me. And very we cool. all look very much alike, so everyone thinks we're twins, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I wasn't going to make any assumptions there, aside from probably related. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Someone Was did that a... say that the volume is very low yeah. for You're Chuck. quiet, Chuck. You For me, on. not okay. to interrupt us. I'm like, should we fix? No, no. I think that's yeah. cool. That's good. Okay. You can talk while I mess with this a little bit. Yeah, I'll just press up, your button so. and spin I the press knob the button. Like okay. three times. Press, press the, the pink button. button spread. Or, hold on, let me see what I'm. Wait, what do you, do? You, what about now? It's louder for me, but it doesn't mean it's louder for you. No, you. Okay. Press the hit. pink button and then spin the knob until you're at like. Okay. Let's try More like, like 56 this. Decibels. There you go. I'm at 59. How about? Oh, okay. Well then, well, yeah, that's fine. Do you like it, it does now? sound a little louder. Does it sound better? Can people hear us? Chat, does this work? This is kind of a fun Chat? thing for the. Yeah, Sorry. isn't that what people do? Yeah, Jonathan said that's better. Yeah. better. Thank you. Yay! Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Cyrus. Is Yay. that is that Jonathan Creamer? I don't know. He didn't. Yeah, do it. It, it, it is, is Creamer. Creamer. Not nice. to be confused with milk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said Jonathan Kramer for a second, and I was like, his last name is Kramer? That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kramer, like, with a K. Yes, the yeah. Seinfeld jokes. I think that's still fine. You know, the character, separate the art from the artist, and I think, amazing. Good stuff there. Yeah. You know that guy got in trouble years ago at, like, comedy Kramer? shows. Yes. For doing He got canceled what? for a bit. Using some very offensive words. I thought oh, he was still canceled. I did not know about that. Yeah, it's a little. Oh. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Don't meet your heroes. <laughs> that's what yeah. it means. Uh, yeah. Not to say that he was your hero, but that would be amazing well, if it was. You know who my hero Kramer is? Kramer is definitely my hero. Mm. I, I got two different jokes there. Now, from what Robbie started to say, he just made me think uh, Robbie's hero is the Foo Fighters. Oh, there goes no. my hero. Foo Fighters. Yeah. No, it's not. Oh, the song. My joke was. <laughs> I was trying to make a, a joke segue and say that Tailwind is my hero. Oh, go into hot, hot takes. takes. <laughs> hot takes, takes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love, uh, you guys had a guest. I can't remember his name, but I, it was really funny because you were saying hot takes and you said something like Tailwind versus CSS. And he was just like, I don't care. <laughs> it was really yeah. funny. He was just like, whatever. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> that's a lot of them, to be honest. So that's what's funny about hot takes is that things will get crazy in the tech Twitter bubble. And then, like, mm -hmm. the rest of the world is kind of, I don't know, I don't care. Or I just do this, I'm not sure. There's not, like, strong opinions in the same way that, like, people go nuts on tech Twitter. Isn't that interesting? Because I'll, I'll be on tech Twitter probably too much. And you see people have an opinion about everything, every new thing that just came out. And yeah. sometimes I'll just be sitting there and I'll be like, I didn't even bother to look into this thing. And I don't have any hot take. And 
you start to wonder, like, are these people just more passionate about it than me? Or you're like, or they just have more time on their hands than I do to argue about at all. Yeah. I mean, maybe both. I, I don't know. It's hard <laughs> to say. They just like arguing in yeah. general. Yeah. Like per- <laughs> being perceived as an arguer. I don't know. That doesn't make for a good marriage in my view. And so why would it make good yeah. for a, a good working relationship, Robbie? This is why we're always fighting. Are you guys married? No. <laughs> just <kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounded for a second. Hey, we could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a good that's a good joke. This yeah. is worth worth asking. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Speaking yeah. of Seinfeld. Yeah, of not that there's, <laughs> not anything, that there's wrong. anything wrong with that. Oh, it's a great yeah. episode. Yes. <laughs> this is good. We can make all right. Uh generational references. I make pop culture references all the time that no one ever gets. So this is good. Mm-hmm. You're I've like this movie from yeah. eighteen forty seven. You guys didn't see it? Yeah. yeah this <laughs> This movie from 1988, and Robbie's like, I wasn't born same, yet. Same, same. like, have you seen <laughs> yeah. anything before birth? I've seen old movies. I don't know. Anyway. I don't, know. I don't understand any pop culture references ever because when I was growing up homeschooled, we didn't have, like, a TV at all. Mm. We didn't have, like, the bunny ears. We didn't have a VHS. We had a VHS player at one point. But long story short, so I miss all the pop culture references. Like, I'm still trying mm. to catch up. Yeah. But I we see. didn't have a TV at, in the house at all. So I remember my parents would take us to, like, Hawaii. We would get to Hawaii. We'd be in the hotel room. My dad's like, oh, let's go snorkeling, kayaking. And mm. all the kids wanted to do, I'm like, eight years old, all I wanted to do was watch the TV. I would yeah. not leave. Like, we go to Disneyland. <laughs> it's like, all I want to do be at the TV. Like, oh, my God, what is this cool thing? You know, Disney Channel. I just yeah. remember that, like, being in Hawaii and my dad being like, come on, what it's Hawaii. Heck? Let's go. And we're like, we have this amazing yeah, Fox. like we just we have, stay in all day. We have outside at home. The hell with this. See, that's yeah. that's yeah. funny. It was like the opposite yeah. for me. I was a latchkey kid, and like the TV was my nanny or caregiver at various times for sure. Yeah. So for better or worse, let's do. And some now outtakes. everyone's kids are watched by iPads. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my older sister had her first baby like a year and a half ago, and she's still being good about no, you know, no screen time at all. So nice, we'll see nice. if it lasts because yeah. I think other people are like, no, once you have, you know, more kids later, it's not going to last anymore. But so far, she's doing good. That's good. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I, when they're really young, I think it's a it's a great thing and it's easier. My kids are five and eight and they have screens, but it's very controlled. Like there's ways software wise you can like one hour a day max, but that doesn't mean they get one hour every day kind of thing. There's There's kind of some middle ground. It's really nice if you just want them to be quiet so you can, I don't know, be like, oh, my wife's out. I need to make dinner. Here you go. Disney Plus it is. And then it's very effective. So I don't know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. The important question that I have is, do you use inferred types in TypeScript or explicit types? (laughs) I don't know. Like, do you mean at work or my personal preference? I'd say personal preference. Yeah. Yeah. If teams force you into something else, that's always... Whatever it is, but uh, what would be your preference if you could make the choice? I guess explicit, yeah. At least that's been my that's been my train of thought lately. I feel like I don't know if you guys do this, but I have sometimes I, you know, you pick a philosophy or a style for a while, and then you're very adamant about it, and then six months later, you're just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I had like my last team lead in my last job, like we weren't using TypeScript for the longest time because he hated. Microsoft and anything that came from Microsoft. And so we I was like looking into TypeScript for a while. I was kind of learning it on my own, but at work it was very much like, no, 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 we're not gonna be using this, like nothing, no TypeScript. And so I we was like that battle at work basically. But I think from him for a while, I like thought it was bad. Just like when your team lead, I looked up to him a lot, and then I, you know, you start to explore more in your own. And I was just like, seems pretty great actually but it was really funny he just hated typescript and anything about it It was just like so anti and you know microsoft is the evil empire and never used that <laughs> seriously though there, there was that pervasiveness was. to a degree yeah. within like engineering there was like one of my not my first jobs but i had a, a big job at a company that was deeply ingrained in like microsoft pay for everything so like all of our stuff was in dot net and i was not necessarily working on that too deeply, but I was doing a lot of the interface stuff associated with that. And they all have the Windows computers and all the Visual Basic and all the stuff that you like forced to have to work in. And I just basically inherently hated like having all of those forced choices. And I knew how much money was getting dropped on these annual licenses and all this bullshit. Oh, I hated Microsoft uh, and my yeah. and and IE six and seven and eight made my life fucking horrible oh, and so like <laughs> escaping a bunch of that what felt like 
Ah, uh, that's amazing. But of course, we've all come around since then and been shown the changes in the business, obviously, there and or the fact that they bought up everything we need in our lives to you know make a living. So there's that, too. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you take all that Windows money and you buy a bunch of cool stuff we actually like. Yeah. Yeah. We all have Windows yeah. if you like to game. And outside of that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, totally. Yeah. But all the other parts have kind of worked. The one we just mentioned a minute ago, Tailwind or Vanilla CSS? There you go. Oof. That is a tough one. Yeah, probably Tailwinds. I mean, because I do think that you learn more CSS learning Tailwinds. I feel like I became mm-hmm. better at CSS once I started using Tailwinds. I like not context switching as much, it feels like, as well. So, yeah, I feel pretty team Tailwinds. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah, I think their docs are, like, way better than the CSS docs because yeah. stuff like, and maybe this is my fault for not researching more, but, like, the inset <laughs> zero thing where you can, like, do top, bottom, right, left, all zero with, like, one thing. It's like, yeah. oh, sweet, that's, like, a Tailwind utility that, like, did that. For- no, that's just built into CSS. So, yeah, <laughs> like, oh, okay. Right? <laughs> Maybe yeah. docs are just better organized. Yeah, I don't know. They're they're just prettier, I guess. You can, like, see them better, see what's going on. Especially when you get into, like, spec docs or, like, crazy stuff. You're just like, I'm not going to read that. Like, condense it for me, please. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I really do feel like I learned a lot more CSS. Like, C- I got, became more interested in CSS too when I started using Tailwind. It felt more fun and intriguing to learn. Absolutely. It sounds like you guys felt that way too. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm Team Tailwind. Chuck is Team Never Write Any CSS. That's kind of where I landed. So, <laughs> are you just a I, CSS hater? So I just kind of okay. So I spent a lot of time <laughs> in interfaces, and I was a big advocate for the separation of concerns movement. Like. What was that called? It was called like it was so you had semantic HTML and it was like stop having this like HTML soup with like don't use tables for layout, use CSS to utilize all of that presentational stuff, pull your JavaScript out, don't have like uh, on click attributes and all this. So this was like coming out of my net, my dot net work, moving into more like media content and everything. And separating all that stuff. And there was this big, like, mm-hmm. web standards initiative that was, like, separate these things out. It's all soupy. Of course, like, we got into React and everything kind of regressed in so many ways. But, alas, that's when I was really into CSS is during this transitional time and some after, like, oh, really working with the Cascade and you can do some cool thing. I remember, you know, when media queries first came out and we were working hard to actually have, instead of two separate sites for mobile and desktop you actually can have things become more responsive and that was all kind of cool and then i just got more and more into building apps and more business logic and all of that kind of stuff and so coming back to interfaces i mean i respect the craft and i just felt like it was getting in my way and i don't give a shit anymore so it was like tailwind makes this easy great i'll do that i did bim and all these other systems you had to figure out or you know styled components and just like 50 different ways for like I don't know, can I just make this look nice so I can work on the other part that I want to get to? And uh, so I acquiesced in that way. So it's not like I'm a CSS hater. I just, I guess in a way, with like over 20 years, I'm like, I don't know. If you don't like the way it is today, just wait till tomorrow because we're going to come up with some <laughs> new bullshit way you're supposed to do. Yep. So. Yeah. So you got a little less interested in all of the maybe like details on how it's done or arguments how, and more of just like, how can I build this and move on and make sure it's good, but then go on. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like big picture, full stack of things in a way. Yeah. I felt that way too. I can use this as the, this is good. uh, How about Git rebase or Git merge? (laughs) Oh my gosh. This is one of those things. I feel like, yeah, I don't know if I have like a hard stance on this one. What did your a past guest say? He cracked me up. I was like on a walk. He was like, I don't, I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody's pretty <laughs> split, honestly. Yeah, like, I would I say that, like, there's no right answer, yeah. of course, to any yeah. of these, so bear that in mind. Other than Microsoft sucks. I mean, I'm sorry, John. Jonathan, <laughs> all right. <laughs> there is a wrong answer, yeah. actually. Yeah, so I'm, I'm judging you guys. I'm watching to see what else. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think the, like, hardcore old school programmers would say you've got a rebase, mm-hmm. but, like, it doesn't matter because, like, my whole reasoning behind doing it and like squashing and like doing all, like to have a nice clean history. Yeah. And then think about how often you have to even look at that. Like maybe a couple times a year you have fuck up hard enough to like actually go look <laughs> at that and be like, oh, like, so it doesn't matter other than like 
just a thing to argue about and be like, that's not clean enough for me. Like, let's do this a different way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do feel like I used to be like, oh, no, rebasing, because I feel like I would mess up my rebases. <laughs> like, oh, I, you yeah. know, I had messed everything up. But then once I, like, learned, like, understood how it worked better, I was like, oh, yeah, nice, clean. It's pretty easy to do. Like, feel, yeah, probably more team rebase. Yeah. Yeah, if you, like, yeah. rewrite history and drop a ton of stuff you weren't supposed to, you're like, <laughs> oh, I don't like rebase anymore, but... Um, yeah, I've used it wrong. All of us. I used it poorly <laughs> sometimes. And, and then I'm like, oh, I hate this tool. I'm like, oh, well, I, I used it incorrectly and messed everything up. Yeah, it's probably part yeah. of it. Someone said it's easier to cherry book. Yeah, I could see that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. Interactive rebase is super powerful, and I really like that. And I learned Git at the times where like senior engineers weren't incentivized to help you necessarily. <laughs> and so I, you, know, you would get told, oh, did you uh, look at this? Go read the fucking manual and come back to me with a better <laughs> question. For better or worse, that's not necessarily like the way things work in teams anymore. And mm -hmm. so I feel like it's sort of like a hard-earned stripe for me to say, I can use Rebase and that's why I prefer it just because I had to earn that shit and do very terrible things <laughs> over probably a couple of years before I figured it out. I love that. Yeah, it's kind of a delicate balance between you don't want to hold someone's hand, but you also don't necessarily want to tell them just like go away completely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the yeah, kind of like yeah. I mean, the people that want to learn will learn regardless of whether you teach them or they go read it or whatever. But there's people that just want to be fed all of it and don't learn anything. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that is the path of gaining experience is not necessarily memorizing and having all the answers per se, but like learning how to find the answers mm -hmm. and then also being able to look back into some of the experiences that you've had and how would that apply to this next set of problems. Yeah. Huh? What do you think about like in terms of so you're trying to find the answer and but then now we have like chat GBT can kind of give you the answers in a way. What do you think about that? Oh, I, I use it, but it's it's too confident. Like mm -hmm. when it does it right, I'm happy with them. Like, wow, like, okay, you want to, I need a regex for something or like, you know, stuff that I never really learned that well. It's great at that. But then I'm like, all right, do this like CSS. And it's like, got you. And it like gives me all this CSS and I put it in. And it just doesn't do anything. And I'm like, but you just said this works. Have you like tried? It's like, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Like, here's the actual way. And it's like, no, it still doesn't work. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 it's faster than Google and faster than like Stack Overflow, which would let's yeah, say for like, finding yeah. answers more so than executable code. It is good for finding answers. You're right, though. Yeah. It, it can be wrong sometimes. And I love how when it's wrong, it's like, sorry, I got confused. Like, can you mm, imagine yeah. you just like make a big mistake, your team, like instead of apologizing, you're like, sorry, I got confused. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. here's here's a good one. So then <laughs> Copilot or Claude? So I've played around with both of them, but recently I haven't because maybe like also a hot take. I started using them for a while and then I stopped using anything because I was a little worried that I was getting like reliant on using them. Yeah. So for now I'm paused and now I'm like, I'm probably doing the one thing that you're supposed to be doing, which is like, I'm not doing that, which is keeping up with the things now. And now mm -hmm. everyone's like, oh, cursor. But I'm just doing the opposite. Like. I just started reading like an assembly book, guys. Like people and like are you are like saying English and just like, you know, using these AI tools and I'm over here like handwriting assembly to myself. Like <laughs> I'm not doing the the proper things in twenty twenty four right now. I think that's subjective and I I'm think we like, can approach that <laughs> here yeah. in some of the things we want to talk about today because yeah. I think <laughs> that's a hot take that you should learn assembly before you learn AI. I absolutely no. think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Know that's how the internals what, work. Yeah. That's my path right now. Yeah. I like it. I, I fully support that. I think that sounds <laughs> awesome. I think that's a smart move rather than being like, I don't know, I want to get on the Next.js Canary release and want to see what the path to uh, 15 <laughs> looks like. <laughs> There's know. plenty yeah. of time for everyone to refactor their stuff every couple months. You don't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that has been this year. I know we talked about this a little bit, but I feel like I just got, I think I got some web development fatigue. I'm saying this on mm. whiskey, web and whatnot, but I feel like I got some fatigue <laughs> with trying to keep up with everything. Mm -hmm. And I just tried to go to more to like foundational things that aren't going to change that will help me that seem more interesting in the moment. So I kind of like stopped keeping up with web development stuff quite as much as I used to. I feel like I got a little fatigued keeping up with everything and just went to other stuff, older stuff, basically. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like going deeper on like JavaScript fundamentals or even like, you know, assembly, like you're saying, or anything that's like not changing 
is going to give you a good foundation to learn all the new things as they do change because I feel like a lot of people just learn React and they don't even know what JavaScript is when they're learning mm-hmm. React. And it's like, <laughs> okay, you kind of need to know because you're going to do stuff inside of your JSX or whatever that's like, you know, actual JavaScript. But yeah, it's just, it's a hard market, I guess. So just got to learn yeah. stuff fast. I felt like that. I felt like I, when I first started, I learned React and JavaScript. And I feel like I definitely felt like I was, you know, you're working on this abstraction layer, but I wasn't really understanding what was going on beneath which really irritated me. Like, I don't like feeling that way. You don't, I don't like feeling like I'm working on, which is kind of hard as a developer because in many ways, like you have to be working at some level of abstraction and you're not supposed to go deeper, right? Because then you'd never build anything. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> so it's, think, a, it's a tricky trade-off. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. there's a balance there and I think it depends on what outcomes you're looking at. Yeah, that's an interesting thing because you both sort of touched on this is sort of, yeah, there are trends, there's a bit of FOMO, there's like this and this happening, which is cool and exciting and all very validating to a degree. But the fundamentals are always the same at the core, which I think is pretty interesting about the whole deal. I just finally started reading, sorry, Carson, but I just finally started reading Hypermedia Systems, which is basically like talking about fundamentals of the internet and like HTML. Is that about Intercooler JS? Uh, no, I mean it, <laughs> okay. So Intercooler HTMX are <laughs> hypermedia modifiers for HTML, for example, and they use JavaScript in order to allow hypermedia to happen. Because the only two hypermedia controllers that exist in browsers are anchors and form elements, and that's it. That's the only thing that can go out and get from a hypermedia system, a hypermedia text response. Of course, we take these same tools and we use them to make interfaces and single page applications and do all this crazy stuff. Anyway, the fundamental bits of the web are about HTML, which we all use all the time, right? And that's stayed pretty consistent for a long time, like small nuances, but hypermedia controls have existed since the 90s, which is a very interesting thing to think about. And then a hypermedia system just takes this control and says, go out and get me, like the most basic thing is an anchor link, which sends a get request to a URL, it gets HTML in response, and the browser just takes you to that new page. Those are just links or whatever. But this is fundamentally the same thing for like 30 years or more. So I think that's really interesting to say, and it's still a prominent part of how we use the Internet. So it's like, of course you should learn some fundamentals of this because you never know. People have done 20 layers of of abstraction and taken a particular path, but what if just the fundamental offered you some other non-abstracted way to accomplish your goal? That's such a good point. But it seems like we don't have that focus. We don't have that focus on learning those fundamentals. Instead, it's like the latest, new, shiniest thing, which is great. There's people much smarter than me working on all these frameworks and tools. But yeah, it's funny, though. I feel like that's not really a focus that we have. You kind of have to come to that conclusion on your own, I think, especially if you've become a developer in the last like five or six or seven years like me. I think that, yeah, yeah, I think it's people just like over engineering stuff too. Like it's way more fun <laughs> to have. like <laughs> to write like 15 Jeez. insane hooks that people can't understand than like know that you can use a like built-in input type range and build a range slider without custom building it or like you know, it's just not as fun to like use the tools as they were intended. It's way more fun to be like, "Oh, how can I like abstract it all and build it all custom and I think there's some of that and like people get blinded by just the fun part and then they don't think about how could I maybe just use this like built in thing easier. Yeah, totally. This just in whiskey.fund is now open for all your merch needs. That's right, Robbie. We're hearing reports of hats, sweaters and T-shirts, as well as a link to join our Discord server. What's a Discord server? (sighs) Just read the prompter, man. Hit subscribe, leave us a review on your favorite podcast app, and tell your friends about our broadcast. It really does help us reach more people and keeps the show growing. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. If we're going to have a chat, I think we should address some of the questions there. Cirrus would like to know, what age did you want to learn to code? Not until, yeah, it was like my early 20s, I guess, yeah. My older sister was working at a startup as a software developer in San Francisco, and I went to visit her and thought it sounded really exciting and fun. I mean, just San Francisco at that time, it's really exciting, and yeah, kind of all went from there. 
What about you guys? Well, I used to build custom MySpace layouts when MySpace was cool. God, (laughs) MySpace. So that's what got me into it. Like, just basically HTML and CSS. I don't think I really knew what JavaScript was then, but you could just, like, MySpace was so, like, insecure. You could just be like, drop all the pieces of the page in whatever divs and stuff you want. And you could just, like, move it all around. And I was like, okay, cool. This is fun. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it would also be in my, I'm going to say my early 20s. I was a little bit inspired by my younger brother who used to make like GeoCity sites for his like online gaming stuff. So I learned a little bit of HTML out of that, but didn't really do anything with it and lost in finding my own way. At one point, I I got into building my own custom computers. So it's funny that they shoot on Windows, but I definitely was trying to use it or whatever else at that time early 2000s for sure and then that just naturally started getting to other facets of like computers and things and I it's funny I would say like the big springboard was I was working at a startup doing point-to-point internet connections and doing like marketing work for them but like I knew Photoshop which because I was really big into photography and they're like oh great you can help us edit these graphic design files so it was like graphic design and editing tables Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would I would say it's probably like Photoshop 3 or something crazy. And just getting a couple of books to figure out how to like slice a Photoshop file up so I can <laughs> update a website with a bunch of like weird tables for alignment. And then that was kind of the start of it. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, people don't know how good they have it these days when you used to slice Photoshop up and be like, oh, <laughs> this looks dope. Love it. And then you would have like a screen that was like a little smaller and it would all just shit the bed and like oh, not look yeah. the same. My favorite was like where like a boss wants to make sure you have this rounded corner button and mm. it also needs to be slightly responsive to the content in the button and so you have to have this like Photoshop overlay where it's like one part is like super long and then you have your end and it just kind of opens up to the whole thing and it's just this weird background hack Exactly. Hack. Thank you, Sears. And it seriously was. It was like, and it would just be to have rounded corners. And this was all when I started also like getting into this web standards movement. I was like, a button's a button. Why are you making it this picture? And it's not supposed to have rounded corners. And you know, you'd have these fights about it. But uh, alas, I needed a paycheck. So (laughs) make it work. Yeah. Yeah. I don't forget. Where did we leave off? Um, Uh, Letter const. Is if you still want to go down that path. But we could just. It's like, where did we leave off? The whiskey hit you guys hard. Not to say. (laughs) Yeah. I kept we thinking before just... this, I was like, I have to be careful because I'm such a lightweight, I feel like. If I have one drink, I'm like, whoa. Like, I don't, That's I don't the point. Grounds, so. We're yeah. trying to take the wheels off, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're in the safety of your own home. But <laughs> yeah. if you want to have a little whoa. more, it kind of doesn't matter. You know, I've definitely, well, we uh, we went through a thing with Prime one time where it was like two hours. And we had five Jeez. different samples, two plus ounces each. And we had oh them all. God. And yeah, uh, we were pretty sure dead. we were all slurring words by the end oh of that gosh, one. Oh, my gosh. Love so. Wait, I, I think I listened to both of his episodes. I didn't finish one of them, I think. I made It's it probably the two-hour one where Maybe. we got drunk. Yeah, that one's very long. Maybe I missed that because I was like, I'm surprised how coherent everyone sounded. Like, yeah. We can, <laughs> we yeah, can. find find the <laughs> two-hour one. We get okay. less coherent. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a good one. That's uh, a I think good one. We, I think we get a little more, like, deep, too. You start having drinks, and you're like, Okay, guys, let me tell you, this is what I think about <laughs> morals and porn. Wait, is that supposed yeah. to be? <laughs> I'm so okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying it out. I'm working on it, you know? Oh, I'm not God. sure if it's accurate. Oh, or my gosh. You got to work on the mustache, though. Yeah. That's, that's like gonna... what uh, React Miami was like, like live. That, honestly, those are some of my favorite. Uh, I just, I, t- I tear up. Some of my favorite, you know, rants to hear. <laughs> yeah, his rants about like morality and family and all that kind of oh, stuff. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the one. Okay, we don't have to talk about him the whole time. Crime is not about you. I don't, Crime. you know. But uh, his house buying experience, that's really funny. You should, you should mm-hmm. listen to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was yeah, that in the long one? That. I forget what was in what. I think it was in the long one. And it talks about like, you know, the good old boy he bought his house from and they kind of had stuff still in there. And yeah. Yeah. We, we won't ruin it. Go check it no, out. No. You got to go. You got to go listen <laughs> Everyone, to that. go we, check it out. We could use at least one. three more listens on that one. So we're not giving it away. <laughs> uh, anyway. I love that. Fun to go off topic like that, you know? I yeah. Like it. yeah. That's, this is what we're doing. We're drinking whiskey and we're just, you know. We got some questions here, but we don't really have to say any of them. Unless, is there any of these hot takes, well, Robbie, that you want? We're done with the hot takes. We're 40 minutes in. We're done with the hot takes. Okay. Um, okay. 
<laughs> but let's say let's talk a bit about your code book club. Tell us a little bit about that, how that started, and how it's going. Oh yeah, so I think it was right before the a little before the pandemic. I was working remote, and I realized that I really needed to. I wanted to, but also needed to learn and study more. And there was some book I wanted to read. And so I got together with two of my guy friends and we were like, we're going to start this book club, just coding book club. And every week we'll meet up. And then like the day before it was supposed to start, they were both like, nah, we're too, we're too busy. Like wives, kids, like, sorry, just we're out. And I was, I don't have, you know, any of that. I was like, so I still wanted to do it. (laughs) And I just remember like, okay, I'm going to go on Twitter. And I had almost no followers at the time, but I was just like, Maybe I could just tweet this into the void and see if anyone would want to meet up on Zoom, just like some stranger would want to do this book club with me. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been Zoom bombed. We've gotten some t- um, talk about porn. I won't get into it. I, I've I've come on <laughs> Zoom and I've seen things I never wanted to see. I'm like, yeah, you know, that person, you're, every human's beautiful. I did not want to see that. Like, I didn't want you on this club <laughs> naked anyway. <laughs> So, yeah. but anyway, I got some members and it all kind of went from there. <laughs> I got some members, people who came on clothed, very, yeah, yeah. making the book club sound bad now. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> So be careful yeah. with uh, your book club. And, you know, there's some, there, there's some starting stumbles, but in general, I, I love the <laughs> yes. idea. I think learning together is nice. There's a lot of positives around that. Yeah. So. Do yeah, I, I had to, read to actually books to read join. Each you do have to read books. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how to read, Robbie? Or can you read I, after a few drinks? <laughs> I can read. I'm I don't know what's wrong with my brain, but I just like if I read anything or sit in a lecture or anything like that, I'm asleep very quickly. So I'm just mm. like it's yeah. all the carbs. I have a hard time reading. <laughs> it's all the carbs. Yeah. It's all the it's all the nachos that you eat, <laughs> I think, or something of that. <laughs> We also do, like, um, we kind of switched it up after a while. We were like, we need to do more projects. So we've done projects and stuff like that. Or we've done, like, you guys probably hate this. We've done, like, leak coding. Everyone's like, oh, God, that's awful. But we've done, like, join the meeting. necessary evil. Leak code together. <laughs> someone has to, you know, be alive. Leak code. Put someone on the spot. So, you know, it's not, not fun sometimes, but it yeah. feels good. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's never fun in an interview. So you might as well do it in not an interview to yeah. learn how to Absolutely. do that some more. I could get down with it to be like, it's like puzzles for geeks, right? Or whatever. Like crossword yeah. puzzles, Sudokus, all that kind of thing. Like in that way, I think it's kind of fun. Like I've played around with it here and there or whatever yeah. else. I think I, the time, the timing aspect and the people watching you aspect is what makes yeah. it. Because I do think they're fun. If like if you have infinite time and there's no pressure for getting a job or whatever, they're fun to complete. Yeah. But if it's like you've got 20 minutes and if you don't do this like <laughs> recursion just right, you don't get this job. And it's like, oh, yeah. shit. Like, well, I you work not. for Amazon, so I don't know that you can talk to, <laughs> like, you're good at leak code, apparently. Well, oh, I, I was, or is that a I was for then. No, I think it's a compliment. It's I couldn't do it <laughs> now. Me. I couldn't do it now. Like, I, I learn it, and then I'm like, don't care. Like, we're, we're moving yeah. pixels around. I don't need to write an algorithm. I feel like leak code gives computer science in general kind of a bad name. Because I remember when I was first starting out, and some people were just like vaguely you're like as a self-taught developer people say you should learn computer science and then what does that mean like in this i feel like in my bubble it meant learn lead code and get good at data structures and algorithms and pausing that and actually learning other computer science fundamentals is just so much more fun for me at least but it's really interesting because i feel like that's what people think when they think computer science like when you're first getting started and you're self-taught and then when you eventually go into it and you're like oh there's so many other amazing exciting things beyond just Leak code. <laughs> yeah. I think the whole algorithms part is like way overplayed, but I do think the lower level stuff can be fun. Like at school, we did like build your own malloc, like memory allocation thing, oh, learn how that works. I like, was just trying to do that. I could not build my own malloc yet, but I was trying to work on something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so, yeah, but like learning stuff like that, or, or like we had a thing that was like the, it was like a debugger bomb where you're supposed to like debug this program that has like errors. And if you do it wrong and like, let the debugger go all the way through, it blows up and you only get like 10 tries. So it like teaches you to be really careful about debugging and stuff. And like, like stuff like that, I think is, is a lot more fun than just solve this algorithm challenge. I think exactly that. It's funny because like leak code has been like a fang barrier for a long time, but that's okay because they were trying to recruit for a certain type and whatever else. And one day Gmail like comes out of that process. So I respect that. But I think that like in my career for I I would say like a good 15 years, 
I never had to think twice about any of that stuff. I'm also self-taught, so it took that long mm-hmm. path hey, and whatever else. One time you needed combinatorics because you I went, <laughs> hey, what do you know about Wait, combinatorics? I was I working at case. a startup, and I basically had to come up with every potential combination of custom options entered in, and I was going through a bunch of stuff with it, and then I started Googling, as we do, and it's like, oh, this thing combinatorics comes up, and it's a computer science thing. And then I start looking that up, and I find that Robbie had, yeah, a GitHub package that did combinatorics <laughs> stuff for Ember.js or something. And so I was like, oh, so what do you know about this? Because apparently this is what I need right now. And it did help, and it did solve my problem. So that, like, one big time was like, a, oh, a computer science thing and whatever else. That wasn't yeah. leak code, but it does say advanced math was needed. Okay, you yeah. get that. And I'm happy to learn that once I, like, find that as the solution. It's just like mm-hmm. having that in my back pocket in case one day I need it. It's a little crazy because I got a lot of other stuff in my head. And maybe that yep. stuff's valuable. I don't know. So for me, it actually was kind of like not on my radar until like maybe the last five years when like off and on we were running an agency and sometimes you got to do mm-hmm. interviews as part of an agency. And then other no, you companies. You do interviews, not, not interviews. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes and no. But anyway, uh, you don't go to like the full thing, but you might get like some kind of like show me what you got. Show me what you're working with, you know. That's show a Missy me what Elliot. you got. I like that. Yeah, I just Missy want to show up to an interview and be like, if like, interview, show me what you got. Yeah, show me what you got. <laughs> show me what you got. <laughs> uh, that would be great. So, all of that said is that oh, I think I may have lost it. See, oh, making, sorry, making I interrupted up jokes. you. No, I and I'm getting you. I'm getting and older, like, and my memory is very short term. The drink, and whatever else, and there's the drinks. I think the drink makes it better. Actually, yeah, it my brain just short circuits when I'm not drunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like one of those people you get drunk and you think everything you say is really smart. Yeah. It's the Balmer yeah. peak. It's I do the that Balmer too. peak. You know that I do that X, too. You know the XKCD yeah. where it's like the Balmer peak? You like get better, better, better until you are just fall off of it. Yeah. Until yeah. you black out. Yeah. Mm. All that is to say is like, yeah, certain things about like learning leak code used to be just like a very narrow group of companies that just had this like specific hiring loop and experience and i feel like so many other companies have adopted it i think partially out of laziness because for the most part like even if you go through that path what they're working on it doesn't need most of like those advanced algorithms or those patterns or whatever else it's like yeah Yeah. it's a crud Mm -hmm. application okay but literally all you need to know is if you nest like four four loops it's probably not performant Mm-hmm. That's kind of all yeah. you need to know. Yeah, yeah. Like, what about seven? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, which one is faster, filter or find? Depends. Depends on the what am I trying to do, you know? Like, will mm-hmm. it be more than and one or am I just trying to find the one? Is it faster if you go backwards? Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> and sometimes it is yeah. faster if you yeah. go backwards, and that's totally fine and relevant and stuff. But, like, <laughs> but how give me much? A like, does, does it really matter if it's to you or I instantaneous regardless? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> if you do, if I get it done, and then you're like, oh, it's a little slower. How could I make this a little faster? Because the yeah, product that, owner that asked for that. 10 like, milliseconds instead of 0.2 milliseconds. So yeah. yeah even well. though it's imperceptible <laughs> to a human. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think this is what we're saying as a whole, because I've had a career that has been predominantly driven by front-end development. Because sometimes mm-hmm. we claim engineer and... You know, that's illegal in Canada now. So anyway. <laughs> Did someone that, on Twitter tell you that? <laughs> like, no, no. I, I like... learned that by working with people in Canada. Oh, okay. And they can't be called software engineers because there's no like. They uh, have to have an engineering degree. Or and a certification and or certification. Or exactly. So mm-hmm. like yeah. nationally recognized engineering certifications and software doesn't have that. So I don't know yeah. how we ever got there. But anyway, developer is totally cool. I'm down with that. I used yeah, to be, developer is great. I've been a webmaster and a web designer at points in my career, so I feel like developer is pretty cool. I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, that's a great title. I never understand why people get upset if, you know, like if I think I call myself like a software engineer once and a bunch of people were screaming at me. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. (laughs) It's technically correct, though. I I mean, it is. this like It's all subjective to what that company calls it. I think that's really what it was. It's sort of like, I don't know. All this got mishmashed in a barrel and 
HR companies were like, I don't know, we need to raise salaries. I actually have experienced this because I've been a hirer and whatever else. And Mm -hmm. HR will like go out into the marketplace and figure their bands and whatever else. And if you have someone, well, they've been here three years and they're trying to make senior or they've been here for a bit and all of our salary is a little lower and we need to like be more competitive in the marketplace. They'll go find another title to apply to that so that hmm. they, they wow. can make those Distinguished bumps. Distinguished engineer. <laughs> and it's Dang. absolutely correct. So now <laughs> we need to hire – so, Yeah, I need to ha- <laughs> hire <good>. software engineers <laughs> instead of web developers. And because <laughs> your HR research forces me into those buckets, that absolutely happens. That makes and that's sense. why during yeah. ZERP, people were able to like title hop. And it's like I want to be senior in three years. I mean that sounds crazy yeah. in general. I mean, it's not because you're not smart enough or whatever else, but it's that you need a certain level of experiences, I think, to a degree to get there. And it doesn't mean it's 10 years, might be five years. I mean, I don't know, it's subjective to you, but that's what they would do to sort of like fill that void. And it's a little crazy. Yeah, know. that makes sense. It is crazy. Yeah, the titles thing is really interesting and wild. And and yeah, people like debating engineer versus developer on Twitter and things you see. But I think front end developers do get, I'm working as a front end developer right now. I think we can get a hard time, especially from people like front end is easy and things people say. But yeah. it's interesting though, because the front end, I mean, there's so many different tools and abstractions and also there's quirks of the browser. And so I feel like my mm-hmm. hot take is like, if you think front end is easy, you're probably just not doing front end very well. Like you're probably Got a bad front end developer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's yeah, absolutely. Adam I might have insulted like 99 percent of my best friends when I said that. Actually, <laughs> Adam Argyle on I think it was on Bad at CSS. I know he has a million podcasts and videos and shit, but uh, he was talking about like you know everyone says that, and it's like okay, well, <laughs> like how many browsers do you have to support? You got like at least three big ones because everything's kind of a Chromium derivative, whatever. Then how many screen reader types are there? How many, like, if you're building an accessible, like, usable, nice interface, it is so hard to get that, like, matrix of all the things right. Yeah. And, like, back end is like, if this, do this, got them. <laughs> it's a little bit easier <laughs> on the surface. Yes, there might sometimes be algorithms or data heavy things on the back end, but just because you're dealing with that doesn't mean you're a better engineer than front end engineers. Right. Absolutely. So you're both wrong and right. You're a little salty, and I get that. <laughs> But obviously, I'm saltier or Robbie salty or both. Robbie, Robbie. Maybe you are and you hide it. I'm always salty. Yeah, he is. He's very (laughs) angry. Jason responds, by the way, Cirrus is not rest. So just so you know, go look it up. You know what else is not right? I don't even know you. His name is Cyrus, probably. You've been saying Cirrus. Billy Ray (laughs) Cirrus or Cyrus? Did I say Cirrus? Cirrus? No, I have said (laughs) Cirrus. You have been saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I picked that up somewhere and I can see where like Cyrus, because there's a lot of people uh, with the name who are famous. Well, you can tell us. Can you type it in phonetically? Yeah. So that I don't fuck it up anymore. (sighs) I cannot say any name right ever. So. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, Cy like. See, like, you still haven't fixed it for me. Oh, my Miley Cyrus. Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, my context is Billy Ray, the first one, because my mom was really into Billy Ray Cyrus, and that's a whole, mm. like, embarrassing he had one song. Oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, well, it bankrolled a that's couple true. of others. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. this virus from Con Air. I can only remember uh, Nicolas Cage's, like, mullet from that movie. And that's the best mm-hmm. part of it, I'm pretty sure. Never saw it. <laughs> never saw it but I did see Face Off recently which I think is just a classic is amazing so. Loved that is it. a I it was great, great movie yes great movie so many I'm not gonna start quoting because that'd be weird there's too many weird quotes but it's such a great <laughs> yeah and me the in fact 10 that minutes saw, one more drink I'm like <laughs> one more drink <laughs> start quoting like, I expect to see a bunch of like Twitter posts that are just quotes from Face Off <laughs> yeah that would be amazing. later tonight you guys are yeah. like we shouldn't have sent that just no no I, I, I might send you a second if it goes well yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's a tangent of, uh, yeah, lo- tangent. and I lost oh my, my place. Gosh. Hold on here. Yeah. And I know Is there anything else tech we actually need to cover, or should we oh, yeah. just yeah. be firmly in whatnot at this point? I we think said- we should be firmly be in whatnot, and uh, we can pull a pin in some of these because I think we okay. maybe should that's have like, Madison on again. Do we go do off topic, guys? <laughs> Yes, I think I was. Oh. You guys really, you guys. I don't care. There's no, no like. <laughs> Surely, there's no, no agenda. With I know. Our no, I'm show, sorry. I'm being so. sarcastic. Yeah. I was oh. trying to say like you're the worst podcasters. No, this is great. We are. <laughs> I mean, which well, is you're not fine. wrong there, but uh, yeah. 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 Our <laughs> one I say, listener. I say a comment too serious sounding, but I was just trying to tease. Yeah. Yeah. Our one listener left the chat already. I was going to so. say Cyrus has joined us and will never listen <laughs> again. <laughs> He's like, Creamer. 
right is on, our one listener typically him and or Typecraft. They're basically kind of like our listenership, and okay. we lost one. So I listen to you guys. Oh, you mean just on yeah. the live stream or on the? Not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I will always join. We might do live streams from now on. This is our first one, so bear with us. Yeah, we're like, we I had don't no idea what this. we were doing. It's and pretty seamless. Yeah, and yeah. Madison opted in, so I was like, let's do it because yeah. she's game. I don't know. You should go live on Twitter next time too. I think Restream can directly it is. go to Twitter. Oh, it, it is, is on Twitter it, and YouTube. Apparently, oh, I haven't looked. Yeah, I don't. Know. I should probably look to see. I what like it's to doing. be blissfully ignorant <laughs> to my performances. So it's on there. Oh, I can watch myself, I think. Or is this an old part? I, oh, Yeah, it's me delayed. Okay, I'm not going to watch that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see it? Yeah. No. no I, I don't even listen to these podcasts after they're done. Like, I enjoy the moment. Someone has on. to. So yeah, I do. someone has oh, to. Oh, so it's you, Robbie. It's you doing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The well, only ones that I've I'm listened to. I'm the producer. To, he's the talent. Yeah. I yeah. listened to the ones where I had the weird, like, broadcast microphone because yeah. Robbie was like, you sound real weird. I don't think you should use that anymore. And I was like, I think it's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. This is good. Yeah. And I listened and to a couple like, in my car, and I was like, "Terrible." oh, it sounds like I'm in a tin can. This is, yeah. No, I don't like it. Okay, I'll go yeah, back I think you should just listen to them, write all the words down, and <laughs> then re-record them with your actual mic, and then we'll Ooh. just publish that. That's a good idea. Yeah, totally. <laughs> do it. Go outside in the rain and wait for me to do that. Just okay. don't come inside until I'm, I've delivered them. <laughs> it's totally fine. I am interested in this because you have had some, like, you weren't born a software, oh, I'm sorry, a web developer. These are decisions <laughs> you made throughout your life. And Is the web not software? I think anyway, it's software. That's like a whole sorry. debate, too. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, fuck that. Yeah, I know. Like, people have uh, so software. Yeah, we just, it's a thick client through the browser. Totally. So. It's a what? A thick client. Oh, like T- T-H-I-C-C? Well, it just means like just all the application <laughs> yep, lives exactly. on board. Okay. You know what this means. You're just baiting me. Yeah. You're just Ask fucking Kim Wheeler with me about now. that thick client. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah, was about, that's still the first person that comes to mind. I'll tag him right now. He'll, he'll love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, in October, I'm going up to his house. If you want to go, let me know. Oh, are you going oh, did you for... schedule that? What are you going for? Real, for? for real? So I'm going to the East Coast for All Things Open. We'll do some things around that. And he keeps like saying, come to my house, come to my house. So I'm going to call that bluff. And others are invited. He invited a uh, Turk and I feel like someone else too. Anyway, so oh, I think amazing. it's kind of an open party. Well, I'll show up then. Sounds Anytime fun. you're invited I somewhere, well. I just assume. It's, I'm <laughs> yeah, also yeah. Invited. Robbie's just my tag along, you know. Yeah, I'm your plus, plus one. one. <laughs> yeah, he's my plus one. Jinx. Because I can tell you, my <laughs> wife has no interest in that party. She's like, go have fun, no. don't do anything stupid. I mean, she doesn't know what she's missing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. Oh, my gosh. A party at Wheeler's? You think uh, you're a lightweight? I would work on your tolerance between now and October. I feel like there's at least 100%. a 20% chance of, like, one person yeah. dying anytime Ken Wheeler hosts a party. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't we don't want to go into React Miami. I mean, whew. Uh, yeah. I know him and Adam wrestling on Dax's fake grass. That was hilarious. That was. Amazing. I have videos of everything, and I'm going to blackmail everyone. Not that they'd care. No, just like you, just put yeah. it out there. Put yeah, it out there. like it, the only blackmail is embarrassment, and I don't think they care. I don't think anyone. I know. So I don't know. I know. I wish I want to blackmail someone. It's one of my life goals. But if you, if you know anyone. Okay. Mental notes. That was amazing. Yeah. I know. I almost went to uh, the. Fourth of July party, but I didn't end up going. Yeah. Ken Wheeler Fourth of July party. You talk about yeah. craziness, like him is all right in America. <laughs> oh my gosh! It was well, it was too close for me to make it, but I yeah, I too close. so we can still do oh just travel with family and everything else. I just like could make it happen. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, October <laughs> we can make this. But yeah. okay, my question was: if you weren't in tech, <laughs> what other career would you choose? Oh, that's a really good one. Doesn't everyone say like farmer? <laughs> I'd have to think about my I don't understand that I don't understand when people say like I just want to give it all up and be a farmer. Like, no, you don't. First of all, are you they don't in know shape how for hard that? that is. Are they in shape <laughs> for that? Like Yeah, right. Is, are I'm you going not. to the gym? I don't know. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's hard to grow stuff. Having tried to grow some vegetables this year and had them all eaten by various things. Oh that's yeah. that's not the career for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would probably be a tennis instructor. I'm not good enough to teach people tennis, but I would try. I got super into tennis hmm. this year. Not pickleball. 
hate pickleball. Tennis Ooh. players don't like pickleball players. Hate, hate, okay. Hate is a strong word. <laughs> I think this it's is fun for take. what I'm it staying. is. This I'm is staying. the yeah. hot take. I do like tennis. I played tennis when I was younger and enjoyed it quite a bit. My son actually mm-hmm. really likes it, so I'm trying to encourage that. He likes tennis and swimming. Anyway, so awesome. so why cool? Yeah. Why hate pickleball? I haven't yeah, even why hate played pickleball? pickleball ever. I've played tennis before, but never pickleball. Tennis so I don't people know. don't like pickleball. Because pickleball is kind of taking over in a lot of popularity. That's so probably. Just for, yeah. to follow the fad of other tennis players. To not have my own opinions and just to go what everyone else says. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Mm. Um, but so I personally don't like, I'm a little kidding, but I don't like pickleball because. <laughs> just kidding, not kidding. So there's tennis courts designated around, you know, every city. And pickleball players come on the tennis courts and they take your court. And the problem uh. is pickleball is not as strenuous as tennis. So you can play for like a long time. And tennis players want to get in and, like, you play, like, hardcore tennis for, like, an hour and you're exhausted. Like, it's an incredibly hard sport, right? Pickleball definitely is a workout, but it's a little more, you know, you're a little, you're, like, one foot from someone else. No offense. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just, just talking crap about, I like pickleball, too. But long story short, so they're kind of taking over the courts and things like that, which is, like, the mm, issue of, yeah, of one that. of the reasons, at least. Yeah. yeah but then I some people that. say, like, pickleball is tennis for unathletic people. <laughs> I don't agree with that. I'm just being have... super mean now. I'm sorry. You wanted hot takes. Come on. No, I love it. What about ping pong? Good. Ping pong? What? <laughs> yeah. It's an Olympic sport. They're more or less athletic. <laughs> because I feel like that pickleball is this weird blend of those two things. It's tennis. It's like big ping pong. Yeah. It's like big ping pong. And you do get two mm. players, but you get you have to play the baseline so much. That's what. Like if I could just play mm. back a little. It's not so bad. But once you have to, like, play up, what do they call it, the kitchen or some bullshit? Once you have to play right up at the <laughs> line. The kitchen, yeah. Like, oh, 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 fucking, oh, uh, yeah. I've only I think played the real yeah. answer is racquetball. I'm, I'm, racquetball is better than all of those. No, fuck the racquetball. No. I tried yeah, that once. Racquetball. I, like, I would rather I like play pickleball. <laughs> fuck I like racquetball. Fuck racquetball. <laughs> I don't think said. That's some shit coming. <laughs> You've never said fuck? Not this on the, is the internet, first I don't think. Time saying oh. fuck. And I have nothing against now cursing. We have I'm not recorded. like against it <laughs> in any sort of religious way. Like other people can curse. I just think when I curse, they sound tacky personally when mm. I do it. But I like when everyone else does. But when I do it, I'm just like, oh, I feel like it, you know. But anyway, fuck racquetball yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, fuck racquetball. The racquetball yeah. is like and this pickleball. fucking rubber ball coming yeah. at my face. Like all pickleball the time. Just like, yeah, and, and I'm it, constantly <laughs> like in a 360 of please don't hit my face. And I it's mean, all you I know, have, and even that is degrading. Like, this is going away. I got to hang on to it for now. Because it's flying at your face. <laughs> it's flying in my face. I don't I want things so flying in my face. I have so many jokes I want to make right now, but I'm just like, uh, how far can I, I, how and I, can I go? Get down, I really I mean, want to go there. Go I, one of them. Please just go one. Do it. I just, well, Clueless, famous movie. Hope you guys know the scene. I when do. one girl is like, I have to get out of this sport because I don't like balls flying at my face. And the other girl's like, there goes your so- social life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this like is why I'm not gay. <laughs> it's, it's why I'm not gay. I don't want balls flying. That's like an face. iconic scene in Clueless. <laughs> it, it is. I make it's that call with my sisters like once a week at least. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Wait, is the context <laughs> racquetball or <laughs> subdivisions? <laughs> All the things, all the things. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> we have one oh, person God. in our chat laughing. That's thank you. We yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hundred percent of our chat, as far as I us. know. <laughs> as far as I know, it's a hundred percent of our chat are on. I love it. <laughs> oh God, it's great. Okay, well, on that note, <laughs> we're over time here. Uh, is there anything okay. you would like to plug or things we Ooh. missed talking about? Oh my God, look how sweaty my hair got from the drinking. <laughs> I'm like slicking with sweat, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I finally caught up to you. Just so you know, I finally yeah, caught up. My to face you. is really red. Oh, that's what yeah, I feel like. You I guys, feel I have to go. Way more I have to deploy after this. this. Drunk. I'm not kidding. I have to deploy after this tonight. Don't, I'm deploying. Don't tell it. your employers we're we're at fault. Shh, I have to deploy in a few hours, but Just I'm gonna have a buddy, button, right? like a deploy buddy. Yeah. Oh, nice. I wish it was that simple. I'll be good, right? <laughs> Can yeah, I like hold you guys liable if something goes wrong? I mean, if you, you want to sue us for 100% of nothing, <laughs> then go for that. Yeah. And what about the you, pod? I could take it over. I don't know if you know, but my, my kids are going to have to take at least one less college course based on us sending you this. And oh, my God. That's just, <laughs> what, that's just what happens, you know? You invest oh God, that's terrible. in your current hobbies, <laughs> and uh, you just go with it. Hey, college oh won't be a thing by the time they're old enough. <laughs> 
It's amazing. This will be gone before the night is over. Yeah, college will probably be gone by then, honestly. <laughs> yeah. College is totally. going to be gone. Yeah, fuck I mean, college. I, already, I didn't really go to college, so I was already yeah. anti-college. So this is a whole other podcast. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Before we ask this other one, what are you going to do at React Miami? Next well, we, year? We're still alive. Yeah. What am I going to do? Oh, I have stuff to announce at some point. Can't say anything right now. What I am going to do... Be getting drunk, Ken Wheeler, obviously. If that's what you oh, mean. We're all doing that. Yeah, we're all doing that. Yeah, we're all yeah. doing that. <laughs> There's 50 people oh strong at Dax's house. Oh, uh, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, Dax and Liz <laughs> were like the best hosts. That was incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What you meant was Liz was the best host. <laughs> right. Yeah. Dax didn't do anything. She, she brought us a constant. <laughs> oh. yeah. Dax brought the us, and thank you, Dax. I appreciate that. You do a good yeah. work. Liz brought us a constant flow of food for a while that was incredible. Yeah. And it was. There you go. Okay, there's one person at React Miami. They seem like a very scary person online. They seem kind of scary. You're like, oh, that guy. And then you meet him and you're like, he's one of the kindest people I've ever met. He's mm -hmm. someone who tweets and you're just like, he's a little scary. I'm a little bit. Just for everyone, you're like, uh, could he be like kind of a dick in real life? Just a little. And then you meet him and you're like, he's so freaking kind. He's like the one of the kindest, sweetest, like greatest guys. Anyway, won't say who it is, but. It's Dax. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, so, yeah, Cyrus was asking. Cyrus just said Dax? Yeah, yeah he is a very Dax. nice, cool I'm, dude. Yeah. yeah. He's very smart he's so and kind. he has strong opinions. And so that's not really being yes. a dick. This no, is no, actually, he's not actually I, a dick. I think this like teasing. equates no. back to what I was saying about like old school web and all of that. And like people were like tough love to a degree. Like, yeah. uh, like I think he has a lot of that. Like he has a lot of very sane opinions about like things happening all over the place and people overcomplicating. Actually, I don't even think that's a thing we've really touched on in this episode, which is things have gotten very complicated. And sometimes oh, yeah. that's right. But is it always? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. We meant to talk about that. Like mm. I had lots of good things to say. <laughs> I don't know what they are now, but. Yeah, you'll tweet them um, later. So. <laughs> I'll tweet them later. No, I completely agree. I think it is tough love or not even, maybe it's not even tough love. It's just like saying like common sense things. I think everyone has gotten incredibly sensitive in this day and age. And if you mm. say something worded the wrong way, everyone gets really mad. It feels like we are turning away from that on tech Twitter again. And I think we see some people that can say different, you know, sort of different jokes and we can joke around again in a way that like five years ago, I feel like we weren't able to, to be honest. So, yeah, I completely yep. agree with you. Yeah, no, I love Dax. I think just some of his tweets, like, I did not, he doesn't come across as necessarily, like, the sweetheart that he is. But he's probably not going to, like, I'm ruining his, like, bad boy image now. Yeah, so, I'll delete that out yeah. part out. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah. He doesn't listen yeah. to this. And neither <laughs> do yeah. any of his followers. So, it's... Uh, he's been nothing. on here, but he definitely doesn't listen to he it. He definitely doesn't listen. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Whatever. But, yeah, SST oh, yeah, is we said good, it was though, getting so uh, complex. We, I said, front of development is getting complex, and we talked about it, yes. And I think that's right. And I think we can have a whole other conversation about that. As it's, yep. it's getting complex. And it's okay that a complex option is available to you. I just don't think it's the default. That's a really good take. And before we can expand on that at all, I'm going to stop us right there. Because I got to go have dinner before my son goes to bed. So, so yeah, thanks, Cyrus, for hanging with us. Uh, anyone else that might be <laughs> lurking, we'll try streaming some more another time and see how it goes. See ya. You've been watching Whiskey Web and Whatnot, recorded in front of a live studio audience. What the fuck are you talking about, Chuck? Enjoyed the show? Subscribe. You know people don't pay attention to these, right? Head to whiskey.fun for merch and to join our Discord server. I'm serious. It's like 2% of people who actually click these links. And don't forget to leave us a five-star review and tell your friends about the show. <sighs> All right, dude, I'm out of here. Still got it.